In my opinion, John Schofield is not just one of the best guitar players that's ever lived. I think he has arguably the best feel of any guitar player alive today, but maybe even period. Nobody sounds like John Schofield. And I think it's impossible for anyone to sound like John Schofield. And in this video, I'm going to try and prove it. I'm going to play you three different examples and try and break down what I think is so special about his playing. But before we jump in, a quick plug for my brand new video course, the Lead Guitar Course. This is a full length video course in the Fretboard Fundamental Series. It's designed for players of all skill levels, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And it doesn't try and teach you to play like any specific player. Instead, the point of the course is to help you develop your own feel and your own approach to play lead guitar, whether you're improvising or writing your own solos. The course comes included with PDFs for each section, as well as backing tracks that we created for each part of the course that kind of accentuate and focus on specific areas that we're working on. If you want more information on what's in the course, you can find out about it in the link down below, and you can also get 40% off of the course via that link. Without any further ado, let's jump in and take a look at John's first example. First of all, whoever shot this video deserves a lot of recognition. This video is incredible. It looks amazing. I, I love everything about it. But I wanted to show this example because just playing by himself with a loop pedal, he's got such great pocket and great feel that he's essentially kind of inferring the rhythm section and he's doing it without hitting the two and four. Like he's not giving you a backbeat on the guitar, which is something that a lot of players, myself included, if I were trying to do something like this, my initial instinct would be to try and give you like a... But something that I do think is unique to Schofield is that sense of time feel and that sense of groove where he can basically make you feel the rest of the rhythm section underneath what he's doing by himself. First of all, let's talk about that rhythm section for just a second. Lamar Carter and Mono Neon together, that's a very, very, very special thing. That's that's one of the best rhythm section performances I've heard in a long time. The thing about Schofield's playing here is arguably my favorite thing about his playing. And it's this sort of like sloppy, lazy, almost kind of like drunk feel, specifically around his lead lines when he's playing ahead or when he's, he's taking a solo. There's this like, real loose, sloppy, almost out of time vibe to what he's playing, but it's so intentional. He knows what he's trying to do. It, it's not a, a lack of ability or, you know, the, the, like he's barely holding on to what he's playing. He knows what he's doing and he's intentional about creating this 
loose, lazy kind of drunk feel that is so hard, it's impossible to try and replicate. And it makes everything cooler. So if we go back, just a quick example, right? There's this turnaround section. He plays a very simple lick. <laughs> That, that's the Schofield thing, okay? A very, very simple line, right? Nothing, nothing fancy about it. But instead of playing it super straight ahead, instead of going like a, it's, it's sloppy, it's like a, like it's almost like he's missing some of the notes, but in that, it's cooler. It's, it's a better choice. It's more musical, it's more interesting. And that's what I mean. Like you could sit all day and try and just practice that simple little G blues thing, but you're not gonna play it like Schofield played it there. I love that. This is the other thing. When he's taking the solo over a song like this and still be part of the rhythm section. Oftentimes guitar players, when we take solos, we're stepping forward and we're playing on top of the rest of the band. We're playing on top of the rhythm section, right? It's like you're almost switching modes from rhythm guitar to lead guitar. But listen to this. First of all, he's playing so confidently. He's not doing anything flashy, anything fancy. He's just staying here in, in G blues, G dominant. You can tell he's listening to the rest of the band. He'll play a line and then he leaves space for mono neon to play a bass fill. And by doing that as a listener, you're listening to the entire band. You're not just listening to the guitar solo. You're hearing the entire ensemble playing together. And that is a masterful, masterful move. <laughs> That's how you make instrumental music that, that non-musicians care about and want to listen to. That's how you do it. You get a bunch of musicians together that all know how to listen to one another and how to play off of each other and not step on what each other is doing and accentuate and lift up one another. They know how to create a vibe and a feeling without one person stepping out and, and stepping on what the rest of the ensemble is doing. And John Schofield, is a master of that whether he's in a, a big sort of funk group like you know scary goldings here or he's playing by himself he knows how to play to the band so to speak then also the space that he leaves in his phrasing I, i've been listening to a lot of schofields playing recently and i've been trying to like pick it up and really try and incorporate some of these concepts into my own playing and the space the way he leaves space and where he's leaving space is something that I, I'm trying to pick up. So for example, over a section like this, you know, you could just try and fill up the space. That, that's doing that thing that I was just talking about, playing on top of everyone. Instead, what Schofield does is he plays a phrase and then he steps back. And then he sort of thinks about the next phrase and plays it and then steps back. can't sound like John Schofield. There's no matter how hard you try, no matter how many of his solos or his his songs you try and transcribe, it's impossible.
Okay, so I want to be John Schofield when I grow up. I'm going to play a part of this again, and I want you to focus on his right hand. Every phrase he's playing is with a different right hand technique. He'll play a line with his pick, and then he'll go to his fingers, and then he'll move up here with his fingers, and then he'll go to his pick and play up here, and then he'll move back here and play with his fingers against the bridge, and then he'll go back to his pick. Every single thing he's doing in his right hand is intentional in the moment. Just with a, a guitar into a clean-ish amp, he has an infinite amount of sounds, different colors that he can pull out just with his right hand. Check this out. So right there, he started with the pick, he went to his first finger, then back to the pick, and then back to the thumb. And every time he's doing that, it's changing the sound of the guitar. It's changing the tone. And he is a guitar player that I think, based on what I know about his playing, is focused just as much on his tone and his sound as what he's playing. That's part of what separates good guitar players from great guitar players. When you understand that your tone, the sound that's coming out of your speakers is just as important as what you're playing, the notes that you're playing, it's it's crucial. The other thing is with this arrangement, it's a very fine line between musical and beautiful and cool and cheesy department store, like smooth background jazz. Now they're definitely on the right side of that line. And I think a big part of that is John's playing and also his tone. Yes, this is a clean tone. It's sort of a, a clean jazzy neck pickup sound, but there's an edge of distortion on it. I've talked about this before, but in my opinion, truly great clean guitar sounds need to have a little bit of distortion because those harmonics that are coming through from the amplifier, from uh, the, the tubes starting to break up and that natural compression is incredibly musical. I'll play it again and listen to just the, the sort of top end of his sound is just a little bit saturated, but it's giving you this sparkly, pretty kind of sound. And he's choosing when to accentuate that by going to the pick versus going to the fingers. That's good guitar tone. I truly believe that listeners notice stuff like that. People know when something sounds good. People know when they like the sound and the feel of something. Everything about his playing, I absolutely love. He truly is one of my guitar heroes and has been for a long time. If you don't know Schofield's playing, I would recommend you start with his record from 1995 called A Go-Go. Then also check out uh, the Medeski Schofield Martin Wood records, the, the, the collaboration records he's done with Medeski Martin and Wood. They're all incredible, especially if you like that funk, jazz, blues sort of thing. John Schofield, in my opinion, has the best feel of any guitar player ever. Very few people can do what he does in terms of touch and groove and expression and, and playing with the pocket. I'm such a massive fan of John Schofield. So I hope you are too. In the description box down below, I'll have links to these videos as well as some other uh, examples of Schofield's playing that I really love. 
Also, my friend Rick Beato recently did a great interview with Schofield. I'll have linked down below. I found it incredibly illuminating uh, to his history and, and how he became the player that he is. Uh, so I highly recommend you check that out. And also while you're down there, don't forget to check out my brand new video course, the lead guitar course. Some of the concepts that I was talking about here and appreciation of Schofield's playing, we go into more depth in the course. So if you're interested, you can get 40% off of that via the description box. My name is Retchel. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, there is no plan B.